Hi, welcome back to this YouTube channel. Today I'm playing the Australia track. This is just practice in F1 2019. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the economy. Wow. I mean, really. Things, it looks like things are doing well in some areas of the economy, but I can tell just as an eBay seller that the last 10 days, 14 days, has been something completely different. I mean, it's always been somewhat steady, you know. Didn't really go your way today. Yeah, they're not going my way. Uh, my eBay is slower than I'm used to. Okay, repairs will take some time. You really went all out in practice today. Are you testing new components? Well, I wasn't thinking today was a practice. I was hoping that my eBay listings would be considered. Uh, going to affect your strategy going into the race? My grid. Well, it's a little low. I keep my grid in my wallet. Appreciate your time. So that's that's about it. I mean, eBay is slower than I would like, honestly. And any other eBay sellers, I'm sure you're probably wondering if it's just you. And I think you can tell from the eBay graphs that it's everybody. So that's kind of sad, and I know there's some stimulus coming around that's going to help out a bunch, but um, I think there's just a general, even for people that have money to spend, I think there's just a general feeling of trying to be a little safe with money. You know, anything that you could, any kind of frivolous expenditure that you could even put in that category is being put off. They're thinking maybe, I think not everyone, but a lot of people that... A uh, good portion of the economy is thinking, let's hold off and let's do that next year. Or, you know, maybe they'll stop paying to have the pool cleaned. Maybe, you know, I'm not trying to use pool guys as an example. Um, but, uh, you know, just anything. It could be anything that people are just thinking, um, let's put it off. So here on my practice three, it's going to be just enough to remind me of the track. And I hate to say it, I mean, I love to say it, but I think a lot of people are staying home to play video games as well, as I am doing right now, because it's a good value. If you already own the game, it's like, you know, between 8 and 12 cents per kilowatt hour, and a lot of these game systems are very efficient, especially the consoles. This one's an Xbox One X, so it's a dark one. That's, it might be a little hard to play. Okay, use the brakes. So I haven't played F1 in a while. Okay, I know this track. Straight ahead. No, no. This is Australia. Okay, so it's been a while. It's a good thing we're practicing. I've been playing Project Cars 2 and some other games. Okay, so they want me to shift. Okay, so you, uh, while I get warmed up, that's what these practice sessions are for. Um, I think the economy is, is going to be a tough one to judge for some time to come. It would be nice if, um, it was, man, this thing does not turn. Project Cars ends up being pretty hard to turn sometimes without the wheel. It would be nice if everyone got vaccinated and all of a sudden the economy just went back to normal and, you know, obviously everyone's going to mourn uh, their loved ones that passed away. And so that's not just a wash away, but um, it would be nice if the economy was to where everyone could go back out to eat. But I think everyone's kind of got their uh, frugal pants on now. And it's that's kind of a hobby for some people. It's see how cheap we can be, you know. And um, there's kind of a social thing to it, also. Like, why are you buying that? Don't you have more money than that? So then people will spend a lot. But during in a pandemic, if you're seeing cutting corners, no one says a thing. Like, yeah, I don't blame you. Tough times, you know. When people start saying tough times, then things can get tough. It's, it's almost like saying that's okay. Yeah, that's cool. Don't spend. Because there's, there's kind of like a watchdog um, of people that go around to make sure everybody's spending. 
And if you're not, then, and they kind of calculate how much you're making and everything. And if you're not spending it all, they kind of give you a little bit of crap for it. Why didn't you spend it all, man? What's up, you know? Are you uh, planning on living a couple more years or something? So it's not always everybody, and it's not all the time, but you just get that. But during a pandemic or any other kind of, um, like, national debt inflation or any other hard times, you know, maybe all the computers are going to be shot one day or something, like Y2K. Everybody kind of, they give each other a break about buckling down. So I think that's what's going to happen here is it's going to be buckle down time either way until people really need things and then it might boom again because everyone's kind of holding back and it's going to be a little bit like a uh, rubber band possibly. Now I'm not, um, that's just, I don't have a lot of indicators, it's just gut feel, you know that uh, some people are going to use the opportunity to buy, buy, buy. So if someone is thinking about finally getting out of the restaurant business or anything like that, there's going to be probably a number of bids. Probably get a decent uh, fair price for it, maybe. I seem to go, go off the edge there. And I put this game down because I was having a hard time getting past some of these levels. In fact, I think I did a... A video where I was playing this and uh, I had a topic of discussion I think I was talking about the Xbox and uh, I don't even want to go back over if you want you can watch the video I have another video similar to this one and um, I was doing better I was remembering the turns more it's probably a little bit hard to watch but uh, let's see if I can remember that next time man I think I had this on full simulation. You can usually change the settings. I have to, box, box. Have to um, switch gears, and it's not going into reverse. Normally, you can just... Okay, I have to put it in reverse and press. So those are the types of things that make it harder to play. When you first set up the game, a lot of times you can just press... The right trigger to go and the left trigger to stop and it doesn't spin out too bad usually but I have it set up for more simulation but man it has a hard time this is an F1 car it has a heck of a time turning when you're going slow like that it's like it doesn't even have the turn radius I think this game would be excellent in VR. I've said it before. I've said it a thousand times, probably. Because this would really be a good candidate. And some people are actually playing this in Vorpex, which is like a 3D injector program. And those turns would be a lot more evident coming up. You'd really see them. You get used to playing it in flat screen, though, like I'm doing now. Gotta stop. But in more simulation settings, it can be a little bit more complicated. They let you mess up more, spin out more. And I got it. You really need to go like half throttle until you get halfway through the power band, and then you can go full throttle. Or the first two gears at least, because those first two, they're real torquey. You know, because it's like, here's half throttle, then full throttle. And I still almost spun out. But that's what it takes to do this, so. But to win the race, you really need to be fast. I would have to be very fast. So every race up until now, I've been able to do that. These guys are a little bit slow. But they're just qualifying as well. Sometimes I get into the bottom of the gear and just leave it there because it's less likely to spin out because the torque is less. So I'll pick a gear. And forget the corner. There we go. It's a good thing they have the gravel there. See right there. That's what's happening. But VR in Vorpex, it's a little bit hard on your CPU. It has to kind of um, doctor it and then draw two images, one for each eye. Not exactly sure how it does it. I would assume that it's uh, doing the game 
and drawing for one eye like flat screen but then it's drawing a second eye while changing like the X you know you have Z depth and depending on how far away the Z depth is it would probably change the Y maybe the X in certain circumstances but it would change that dimension how it relates to your eye so further away wouldn't do much but up close, it could be as much as like three inches change. And then it's got to redraw it through the GPU. It's got to draw all of the grass. All the color goes in. Basically wireframe with the CPU. And I think they can just doctor it. Now, don't quote me, but I would, I would assume that they can just doctor the one image. Because a lot of times, the VR is not super CPU heavy. And that would explain why. It's kind of a simplified game. And then to draw the other eye, all they're doing is changing some numbers. But then the GPU, it goes in like a crayon, and it's got to go around and draw in all the color and do all the shading. And that's what takes a lot of compute power. So you see the GPUs kind of bogged down a lot with VR. Which would be nice if they just made a whole new system dedicated to VR where it's not the same old. You know, they were always doing those old systems like the PlayStation 3 and some of, like I think even the Xbox, they had uh, systems designed around what they were doing. And it would be interesting if like SNK or someone like that made like a big Neo Geo VR system. I know that a lot of those have gone and, and flopped, though. You know, a lot of the early VR lawnmower man time, people would jump in, and maybe they made a pretty penny, maybe they lost, I don't know, but they were um, used quite a, quite a bit at the movie theaters, and then they were nowhere to be seen for a while after that. So, But it would be neat if they just made Super Power VR with games and then you would have a GPU per eye. I guess it's just a technical thing. It doesn't even necessarily need to be. They could come by and, and show you their new VR, and they would say, yeah, there's two GPUs in there, but there's not. But if it if you heard that there was, then you would be happy in, in doing so and, and hearing that. So I guess it's just the words, two GPUs, that I really want to see. But even still, even if they had a system there, they were truly two GPUs in there. You could have one CPU set that's sending instructions to two GPUs, and I don't know how it would work. And in fact, there's probably um, a big technical side that is such a steep learning curve that it would just uh, put me out of game playing and put me into uh, playing catch-up like no tomorrow. So, but it would be neat if that were to work. Because I know they were doing SLI for a while, but I don't know how it was splitting up the information. But you know, if, if it was out of sync, like one frame was ready and the other frame for some reason was not, and there was just silicon differences, or, I mean, just uh, there's probably just a plethora of problems that comes about that you don't really think about. You're just like, you know, you can double things up. You know, you want two tires on the back of the car, you put two. You want a three-wheeler, you just put one, and it's just... It's simplistic thinking, I know that. But, um... That way, flat screen gaming and VR could stay at the same clip. That's I think that's where I'm going with it, because VR always ends up being, turn the settings down, and, you know, cut it in half, basically. Cut your flat screen gaming in half. So we're either going to double the GPUs or we're going to play 10-year-old games in VR. Well, they finally run now really good, so now I can play in VR. So I'm going to be playing um, Fallout 3 in VR while everyone's playing Fallout 4 on flat screen. Or have everything VR ready. And if you're into VR, buy two GPUs instead of one. And even if you have older gen GPUs, it's still to and then people could use the, the older GPUs um, like responsibly you know are we gonna let those devalue down to nothing no those are used for VR just like the old games but it would be nice if they would hit VR you know because when they're new they're new 
and you've probably already played it, and then it comes out on VR, and you're like, oh, I get to play it again. Which isn't always bad, but if it's not a real stellar game, it can be where you know it's right around the corner, and then you're playing it in VR, so it's neat, but... It's almost like day one choice of VR in the same quality. Or... It, like, uh, I don't play Cyberpunk. I don't have it. Maybe I'd buy it one day, but right now I don't have it, and that would be a perfect example of a game. Let's see if I can go backwards. It would be a game. I think it's a game. It would be a game that um, that you could play with two GPUs because it barely runs already. I mean, it barely. I mean, it runs well on really high-end systems, but. It's definitely, there's room for better. There's room for um, it to play better, so. If you could play that day one in VR and you're still getting a lot of the stuff drawn that you want drawn, and you're getting the full experience, I think that's going to add value. Because some people have enough. I mean, that's what they do. They do games. They, they skipped ATVs. They skipped four-wheelers. They skipped jet skis, they skipped snow skis, they skipped everything, they skipped the vacation and they like their gaming because it's a good value for um, recreation. You know, maybe they have a gym membership and they're... I don't want to describe a certain person because I don't know who that this person is, but, but basically, you know, they have a gym membership and they have a computer and they think it's a good value and maybe they're saving some money or they spend every last time on their computer, but either way, that's what they're doing, and if they could have two GPUs and play day one games in VR, it would, I think it would help the market. Now, this is just a wish list, and sometimes the only thing that you can afford on a wish list is what they send you when you buy from wish.com, you know, it's, it's, there's logistics behind it that may or may not be met, so I know that. But um, it's kind of like racing this level. You gotta be able to make the corners or else you're not gonna win it. So that's. That could cost money. Now, when I'm practice up, I do a lot better on this game. But even if you lost this, if you were playing in VR, you wouldn't care. Now, like I was saying, they do it in Vorpex. I was going to uh, try it in Vorpex because I have space on my computer. I have Vorpex. All I have to do is combine the two. But I hear it runs a little bit rough. And my CPU is kind of underwater sometimes. See, I was turning. I should have made that at that speed. This thing needs like a Mario Kart uh, slide. These things, in other games, they grip the road like nothing else. Like in Project Cars 2, you could have gone around that corner at like 200 miles an hour and it would have hugged it. And it wouldn't have done that either. Ooh. That bad. Are you all right? Let me know There's all practice. Right. Okay, I'm going to see about... Um, Oh, that's cool. Look at that. Oh, they don't let you go off the path. That would have been cool if I could just go up in there. Okay, I would like out. I'm going to retire. So these games are all pretty similar. 2016, 17, 18, 19. Oz team. Oz. Hosses. The session has drawn to a close. So let's review our top three. Bethel, so that was the last one. I might lose this race. I hate to say it, but it's been that way. I'm not really good at this. Bad luck today. That must be incredibly disappointing. Yeah, well, 
What caused that issue in practice? A new component? Power unit. You really put a lot of effort into practice today. Are you testing new components? Great. Well, that's everything. It's not quite like Mass Effect there, but it's kind of a neat touch. Nice to have somebody talk to you afterward. You know, a lot of these things like that where you're, there's a part of your brain that's highly developed for certain things. And sometimes it can be hard to talk if that part of your brain is like on fire, you know. I would imagine coming out of a race that maybe you wouldn't be like a poet, you know. You might might still be stuck with the, the race brain. Season one. I these lights are in my face, so I'm having a hard time seeing. Qualify. All right, we'll qualify. It's funny the race brain I was talking about. It's uh, it reminds me a little bit of Microsoft Flight Simulator. It's the Australian Grand Prix. You can get into that in VR takeoff, set your direction, your heading, your speed, vertical speed, and your uh, the autopilot, and just put your head back and relax. And I actually fell asleep. That's probably not a good time to, I shouldn't even say that, because if I ever apply for a pilot's license, they'll probably uh, be wondering what the heck I'm talking about. But it's it's relaxing. I was acting like a passenger, though. I wasn't really acting. I was pretending, as, you know, it's not pretending, but I was. I set the simulator to fly, and then they can't, you can't really walk back. I was wondering if a person could, like, set up chairs to where you could set it up and then just go to the back and, and look out the window. Maybe uh, the tracking would take you back there if you got up. You had an, another, like, a chair out out a bit, and then you had some chairs back here. And if you set it up to fly, and then you could just go sit down, but it's very relaxing. You can just totally um, fly. I mean, you're just in the air. You can look out, and there's clouds, and it's uh, totally a good simulation. What is this? Okay. But it reminded me a bit of those sleep YouTube videos I was almost thinking maybe I should make a YouTube video where it's just flying at Microsoft Flight Simulator and looking out the window in the back seat somehow okay this is not going for qualifying so See, there's that torque again. Now, some of the other people that you've seen racing on the internet may be on a different setting. Less of a simulation. So they don't have to worry about certain things like spinning out. But I like to make it as hard as possible. Not in life in general. But just in this, these racing games because I want the most um, authentic racing experience. If when I hit the pedal in real life it would spin out, then I want to see that on the game. Because it's good to develop some skill out of it. Not that I would necessarily ever use it, but it's kind of the whole point. I think Microsoft Flight Simulator would come in super handy. And any flight instructor that heard of that. The thing about uh, flight being a uh, pilot is you have to have your body in certain order. You have to have eyesight. You have to have hearing. And some of these jobs, they don't care about your hearing. Like, they'll just, if you wear ear protection, technically they won't say anything, but there's a definite, uh, we don't do that here type of a thing going. Um, and it's maybe one day a week. Five, out of, five days out of six, they don't really care. But then that one day out of the week, it's kind of like we're trying to talk to you. What did I lose? We've 
But if you're hearing a shot, you cannot get a pilot's license. Now, a lot of people are like, well, you're not going to... Pilots do get pilot licenses and non-pilots. But, you know, some people like to keep their options open. And you have to have good eyesight. Um, you have to be able to, like, t take a complete medical test and, and pass. And a lot of people, they have to retire or they don't get to do jumbo jets anymore because of uh, they can't meet the license requirements. So, um, you got to feel like you're just at a, um, you wouldn't want to live in a rough neighborhood if you were a pilot, I don't think. Fortunately, we've picked up some grid penalties and we'll be starting further back than you expect. As for how bad it is, that'll depend on what the other drivers get. I wonder if there's any of that with F1. If they, I'm sure they test the guys, but I gotta wonder if it's just, hey, man, you're fast, or is it, let's check your hearing and eyesight and all of that. That's one nice thing about the simulations is you can... Even if you can't pass a medical, you can still fly Microsoft Flight Simulator, and it's getting more and more real looking. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. And your life. From Lewis Hamilton yesterday puts him on pole position, and it's found. It doesn't have to be based around it. You don't have to make that your only thing. We can do a lot better. Than and this. even if you wanted to make F1 racing your only thing, you better be darn good at it to get into it. So. It's neat. I wonder how they feel about people being able to race. Like, are they... Just gotta wonder. I know simulators can get a bad rap sometimes. Um, RC. Airplanes and helicopters. People don't generally dislike it, but... Um, say you learned how to do some trick on it and you didn't spend a lot of money on parts and you learned it in VR and then you went out and killed it at a competition. I don't know, it's for some people, it just wouldn't want to come out and tell them, like, yeah, I learned that on the simulator. I want to keep that one back a little. It's getting more commonplace where there's, uh, general understanding about what gets done and what doesn't. But now they have, I think there's real flight in VR and there's one on Steam too, it was... I forget the name of it, but there's another VR simulator. I'm going right here, I'm taking the sidewalk. Man, look at that! Okay, box, That's box, probably box, about box, as real as it gets strategy. too. That's what's Come sad, this and this is the race. Back tires just come right out. Boom. What happened? Let me know. That's gonna be okay. the race. Did I blow the tire? Oh. There's a replay. Let's see what happens. Well, that's about all she wrote. I'm going to restart. First race of the season, and unfortunately, we're at the back of the grid. Show the team what you can do. I don't know. I think making sleep videos to Microsoft Flight Simulator might be a bad idea just because. I don't know. Maybe it'd be okay. As long as you're not in the pilot's seat. It's okay to sleep in the back. be cool you could just go in the bathroom and join the mile high club and everything although I don't know how my wife and girlfriend feel about that but uh, for other people maybe I don't know I guess I'm kind of against that. that's what I was saying in the other video too so um, some of these headsets are uh, being played uh,
I don't know. I guess I don't know. But I would assume that uh, some of it... Uh, I was reading there's a growing segment of VR that's... having to do with pornography, so... I think it gives it a bad stigma. That's what I was saying in a lot of the other videos. It's just... Uh, probably better if it's not really known for that, or that's not its main... attractant. I guess the younger you are, the more that's a thing, and then you get older, and it's... Not that big of an issue anymore, I guess. So older folks, they don't really care, though. Our new strategy is available on the MFD. There's my turn. I guess the world kind of changes. The focus of uh, the world's eye is on like uh, 20 and 30 year olds, but there's a whole lot of other people out there. There's, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80s, 90s. Yeah, and you see them on Netflix a bit, but there's just a lot of younger um, movies about younger folks. You know, like uh, Netflix, like biohackers and uh, I guess bloodline was kind of less about too young a people I guess it was uh, 40s I guess it depends on the program holy smokes look at that So I'm a little bit unpracticed on this game. I was playing it a lot more about a year ago, maybe six months. I guess it was 2018 I was playing before, and now this is 2019, which is probably why I'm seeing the same track. That would make sense. And they really haven't done a whole lot of changes. It's not like it was completely revamped. I guess, you know, there's really not a lot of people talk about the, uh, the non-gaming aspects of VR. You just don't really hear about it. People don't talk about it. Maybe on Reddit they would. I just think it's bad for it, just because you know how people are about dog and things. All it takes is one time somebody gets caught with their pants down somewhere and it's all over the high school or whatever. And it's just stigmatized. And VR has a long way to go. It just has a long way to go. And it's kind of like you saw what happened to 3D movies. And that's why I think people are kind of like, don't mess with this one this time around. Because people did like the 3D movies, but it just, there was some bad things about it. And VR is kind of like, a, you're doing this type of thing. This is what you're doing, and it looks like you're there. And I think 3D TVs may have kind of gone out a little bit because of VR. There's one where you have a TV screen and you have to put on glasses, and the other thing where you put on glasses and it took you to another world. And I kind of think VR kind of just, you know, bumped the 3D TV off to the side a little bit. Now, 3D TVs are still around and the, the movies are still 3D, being made in 3D, a lot of them, but as far as three-dimensional goes in a household, I think VR is a lot more likely than a 3D TV in 2021, especially as a new purchase. And what's nice about the games is, whoa, not again. Well, we're tired of seeing that. I'm going to go slow so I don't spin out. What's nice about the games is, is they enable high frame rate. 
where and it doesn't have to remember each frame and I think high frame rate anything is going to start being game oriented because for streaming on Netflix and other things like that there's a whole heck of a lot more frames that they have to memorize and store and stream and gaming it just kind of makes them up as it goes so if your hardware is really powerful it'll flash 120 frames a second for two days straight for pennies once you have everything in order and it can do 4k if it's once it gets to be 4k and 8k and then 120 frames all day and 120 frames and two eyes it's just gonna open up so many doors for creativity and I don't think people want to see this one go 3d TVs are like ah that's too bad I wasn't gonna pay for it it really comes down to dollars you vote with your dollars on a lot of things every day and um, I did with Microsoft Flight Simulator I could have easily bought the $60 version but I bought the $120 version and I thought it was gonna be worth it but they're having download issues where they like I only had 20 planes and then Blue I downloaded it a like I erased all the planes I was supposed to have 30 planes because I got the the most expensive deluxe version premium deluxe and I was supposed to have 30 planes and I had 20 and I was enjoying them but I wanted the other 10 so I went and deleted all of the additional content the DLCs hoping it would re-download them and it didn't look these guys lap me it didn't download them so I'm I only have 10 planes now and I had 20 but I was I was allotted supposed to have 30 I paid for 30 yeah when I get in practice with this game I can definitely do well and I have a lot of lights on my face and I'm playing on a projector blue flag, blue so flag. that's my excuse for not doing as well but you know I figure why not do a video we still get to see the game and uh, a little bit of my commentary. So, but Microsoft Flight Simulator, if you're looking at buying it, I would definitely look at the DLC problems that they're having. And there's just a million and one people that are having a hard time downloading. It has some kind of license issue, and I bought it on Steam, so. And I hear it's happening on Steam and on Microsoft, their website. And it's kind of strange that it gave me 20 the first time around, and then I deleted some, hoping it would cause it to download again. You know, it has auto-update, so I thought it would see that it needs to update, because someone said that. They were like, just delete everything, it'll come back in. I didn't delete the main game, but I deleted all the uh, extras. And all it did is lift them, deleted. It brought some back. I mean, I deleted everything, all the planes and everything. And then it just brought back the, the original 10. So I'm at the $60 version, but I paid 120 So I have faith, you know, it's going to come back. When I maybe, maybe if it's, um, I don't know what could be specs but it gave me 20 so now 10 but I haven't really pursued it much I think I might just uninstall it and reinstall it and possibly open a ticket with or maybe do a video on it and just show it see who else is having the problem maybe we can get a a video started or a help file I've, I've looked around and there's all kinds of solutions people say that worked for them but it doesn't work and then there's a bunch of people afterward that say that didn't work for me so I pursued some of them. One of them was to delete everything. It didn't work. So a lot of times I have this in auto shift. And it gets you off the line a lot better. You got to be really focused on this. You can't be talking like I'm talking. And you really got to think about the track. A lot of these guys that do the, the video game first and then they do the commentary second, but I like doing it all at once, just get it uh, live kind of thing. 
And a lot of people, when they're playing games, it's about like this. They're not just killing it. Boom. Well, it didn't kill me. But this is the turning radius right here. Look at that. I went back and forth and got almost nothing. I think for some times they should let that go just another couple degrees because that's really, unless that's it. I mean, maybe that's it in the real world. But if I can't get those to work on Microsoft, that's going to be a bummer because it's a really good game. It may be my specs. Maybe they don't like my CPU. It's kind of old. But it runs, so it's possible that uh, once I update and get a newer system going, it'll, it'll all come in. Because it's on Steam. I'll, I'll own it. Jeez. How did I forget that corner? I didn't really forget it, but it just came out of nowhere. I kind of want to get past some of these levels. I've played these ones. It'd be nice to get to some other tr tracks. There was one beyond this that was really tough. You may have to set the difficulty down some. It's a really shallow angle. That's why I think VR would be nice. Because people learn these corners in a three-dimensional way. Their brains are totally made to see these things, not as pictures, but as a three-dimensional place that they've been. And when you go through a corner, it's just a totally different feel in three dimensions. Is in the pits. Or just being able to look around. Even if you have an eyesight problem and you can't see completely depth, just being there and being able to look around as you go through the corner. It's just a lot better. So, I think t uh, this game is going to get a VR patch this year. Because it's one of the best candidates. And it's a long-standing franchise that just wouldn't be able to do otherwise long-term, I don't think. Man, I knew to step on the brake. God. It's not good for a video, I know. It's discouraging. Blue flag, blue flag. There we go. Engine off, engine off. Wanna restart anyway. Alright, clean slate. Here we go again. Now I'm just going to play. I'm not going to talk, I don't think. Let's see if I can do this. Should change the settings. No. I don't think they're going to let me. Break. Break.
break again. This is the one that was gonna get me. Break. That's the one that gets me. I gotta remember that. Okay, we're through the start phase. Now let's build on it. Right after that long straightaway. I saw DJI come out with a new FPV drone. The drones sure got a hard hit. Break. That was like a real cool thing. And then people started going to places they shouldn't go. And it ruined it. And they're still doing it, kind of. I think they're semi-responsible, but there was just a few times, like out over cars in New York City from a building, go out and then come back and... DJI had kind of perfected them a bit and they had a lot of quality control. But uh, some of the ones you build, they can kind of mess up, you know? They can blow a motor in the middle of the air and a lot of times they're high performance. And even DJI will do it too. But they have a new one. It's thirteen hundred dollars. It's like a FPV racing drone. It looks pretty cool. I used to do a little bit of. We didn't call them drones, though. I think the whole everyone calling them drones kind of ruined it because they were called quadcopters and tricopters, and it was just a part of the RC airplane community where they would have places where you would fly. Is being enabled this lap. We can use and you get an AMA card. I always had one. Even if I bought it late in the year, I would still get one before I flew. And they would have a board you would put your frequency on. They didn't even have the ones that changed frequencies for a lot of people. And people would responsibly fly in a place that was designated for it. And they would do um, put on shows for the public just out of free to do it freely you know and help people find the hobby and so people had a fun time and but the the quadcopters started getting called drones and people were making the videos and some of them were responsible over not a lot of people but other people were kind of taking them to concerts and flying in and out and they may or may not have had position not position um pole position they may have not had um permission full permission but um, I saw a few videos online and like they would fly into a concert and stand right next to, a, not stand there, but he would hover his drone next to the singer and then fly back away. And there was a lot of instances of that. But it kind of got totally ruined. But DJI is reaping the benefits because they kind of sold enough during the lull that they're kind of getting market share while it kind of comes back. It doesn't really, but the people who are truly into it are going out and getting pilot's license so they can actually fly them. But there's rules like you have to have someone spot for you, and they have to, it has to be in sight at all times. I mean, there's things that the rules are such that you just can't do what they want to do with them. You can't fly them out 10 miles. We're running an excess of but if you have your own property, I don't know who can really say much. You keep it down a couple hundred feet, and I know uh, they use it in agriculture a lot. 
And I don't think there's a lot of questions asked about, you know, what's your qualifications for checking on your corn. Because it's just like another implement. But yeah, that new uh, FPV drone from DJI looks really neat. Looks like a good buy. I don't know about the money. It's pretty expensive, but you're getting a lot. The problem with them, though, is you crash them. And that was the problem with RC hobby is people spend five grand on a new one they go fly it and then they i've seen them not even get off the ground the first time can't even get the maiden going and it goes up and, Check your i mean i've done it a new strategy option i make i've made my own home built jets out of composites and um they flow wonderful but sometimes the one before the one that flew wonderful didn't fly as so well just due to uh things that a modeler runs into that they all know about that are normal some people they were they were buying kits that were so cheap that no one ever even checked the balance on them and there was no instructions and no way you would have to do it all yourself so it's funny those can be sold and no one says a thing about it they start a, a nice thread about a support thread and they, everyone gets in on it and they help each other out But if you make your own and you're doing the same thing, the support isn't there. The pit window, you'll be on the yeah, I guess it's a group thing. Everybody gets one, but uh, forgot there was a, there was a model that the fuselage was so heavy, it was laid up like four times. It was like a quarter inch thick, and they were selling them for like eighty dollars. I don't know. It's like they're scrap or something. No intakes. It was a ducted fan jet, no intakes. And intakes are super important until you buy something like that. And I know, oh, you don't need them. But if, if you make your own jet, you, oh, you can't do that without intakes. That's well, just more psychology stuff. But uh, I believe the DJI is a high quality. Piece. I, I'm always going to say drone because that's what everyone's calling them nowadays. But uh, their optics are really good. Their camera stabilization is really good. Those are things you just can't home make. You can't, I mean, not home make, but it's, it's you need what the stuff that they have. That's specialized. They may be outsourcing their camera stuff to other people, their camera gear. But either way, they're getting it all into a package and selling it. And then you're paying a, a premium, $1,300 for it. But there's probably about $1,300 worth of stuff there. If you have some extra money, $1,300 for a DJI FPV drone would probably be pretty fun. Especially if you have somewhere to fly where no one's going to bother you. And even better yet, that it's legal. But a lot of it's just so gray. I mean, they're just like, yeah, we're legal sometimes. We're legal when you see me walk to the car with it. But if you watch their flight video, you'll say, hey, how did your spotter follow this far? It's just kind of one of those things like the people that break the rules get to do it, and the people that are following the rules don't get to it anymore. And it used to be kind of like everybody who. Battery charge is low. If we turn down we could, the deployment, could. we can harvest And a lot of energy. people, they were building their uh, quadcopters. They weren't buying them. There was, like, some discipline behind it. You had to know how to set it up. You had to know the PID set up, which is common in a lot of things. It's kind of like a feedback loop. I can hear them about to lap me. That is so sad. I'm going to start cutting corners. I cannot let these guys lap me. I'm starting to get used to the track. This is what qualifying is for, and uh, what's that practice? They usually have three rounds of practice. And if I had played all those for a while, I'd probably be in better shape to do this. But it's late, so I just thought I'd do a video. But I do have an eBay store. It's called GB Hatchery. It's on eBay. I was talking about how slow it is. It is. 
I think once those stimulus checks go out, it's going to pick up a bit for a little while anyway. Had a few sales, but it's just been slower than normal for this time of year. So push now. But businesses have their cycles, even small ones, even tiny ones. They still feed from the same group, which is society. So that guy got ahead of me. But I have a lot of skates I need to list. Blue flag, blue flag. Like inline skates. Still have some stereo equipment. I have a couple catcher's gloves for baseball. They're not really nice. I had one last year. It was really, really nice. They're decent, though. They're okay. They'll work. It's a catcher's glove. We're not racing Some people like them broke in a little bit. When you can. Give somebody a brand new catcher's glove and they want to run it through the wash and just do all kinds of stuff with it. Rub it down with oil and hit it with a hammer and catch baseballs with it for two days before they trust it. So I definitely need to lower my difficulty on this game. I think the simulation difficulty is a little higher than normal. But I could be a little bit more disciplined around these corners. Especially with the shifting. Breaking and shifting back up. But it just takes one little spin out and you're just out of the game. So. Makes me want to play Isle of Man in VR. That's another game that should definitely be VR. This one and Isle of Man. Because I think some people, that would just keep them busy. They wouldn't really want to do anything else. F1 is really specialized. Open wheel racing is pretty cool. Sometimes they're semi open wheel because they have such big fenders and uh, wings going all around the wheel. Blue flag conditions create a gap and let the car behind through. I don't know, I kind of like a little bit of two-stroke. I kind of wish they would bring two-stroke back to racing. I think they're trying to set the example of racing with... It's too bad because society follows it. You know, if we could just say, go ahead and be efficient in our personal lives. But when we race, yeah, we're going we're gonna to do two-strokes and we're going to do whatever. And then, then maybe they could drive efficient vehicles, responsible daily drivers is in for his stop. but it seems like whatever racing is doing people want to do in a smaller way out on the freeway there's double wish zone, wishbone suspension then that's what people want on their family car even if it's kind of like a pared down version I don't really think that's a place to be racing as much not for time anyway I mean it's just blue flag, maybe blue race flag. for efficiency or or reliability, I like that. Go out there, you turn the key and it starts, or you don't even have a key. Go out there and it starts. There's something about that that's relieves stress, you know, and a lot of people, they don't realize the effects of cortisol. You look it up, what does cortisol do to you? Behind. Let them pass when you can. To your body, it has physiological changes, it causes a massive increase in cortisol will cause physiological changes in the body. So most of them are bad. It might wake you up for the minute and people say, hey, there's a positive, but if you look at the health consequences of it long term, you're a little jolt here and there ain't going to kill you, but if it's just something that doesn't go away and you're full of cortisol all day, there's, that's actually a disease. 
called Cushing syndrome. And some people have it through, you know, they have a problem with their thyroid and other people are just distraught with, you know, and it's not I, the, what Icos Quest is going to be doing that makes people distraught. It's nothing like that. It's, you know, just, blue flag. I guess, life crisis or something. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have Cushing syndrome or anything uh, like it, but high cortisol has a few side effects. If you get to looking them up, you can see what they are. And that's why I worry a little bit. I, I'm not really worried, but I'm a little apprehensive and concerned about the types of games that are coming out for VR because they're so realistic. And if everyone's full of cortisol from other things and then they go home and get full of cortisol some more, then no one's getting any exercise and they're full of this chemical that's not helping them. It could just be kind of uh, bad for people's health. But I think people know it's good for them. If they're playing something that they're not enjoying, maybe people like an, a lot of cortisol. They might be possible. Like you could make it a street drug or something. There you could have angel dust and cortisol crunch or something. I don't know. I think it's unacceptable, personally. Some of these corners, you get around them nice, and it feels feels good. And that would be even better in VR. I think I'm going to get this for my computer, because this is on Xbox right now. Game Pass. If you have Game Pass, you can just get this, no matter what Xbox you have, and it'll look pretty similar. It's been such a fight for 4K that now that I have it, I can turn it down off 4K and it doesn't bother me that bad. I'm like, hey, look. It's not as crisp, but... Still looks pretty good. It'll be another 10 years till people with 1080p TVs just feel totally not worth it. 720p started getting kind of sour about five years ago. Especially once it was on the phones. It's like, hey, 720p. I think my phone right now is 720p. It's enough for the size that it is. If you look at your retina and look at how much of your retina is being encompassed by each pixel, it's plenty. You can always go more, but... My rent is happy. It's nice that games are where they are right now. I mean, we can always go more, and yeah, the future's going to be bright, but it's pretty darn bright with uh, second-gen VR and now Vive is promising a standalone headset, which I'm actually a little excited to know about. Like, I don't know if I'm going to buy it, but I'm excited to hear about it. I kind of like to buy things off that really tough ble breeding, uh, the breeding edge, yeah. <laughs> for some people it's the bleeding edge, for me it's the breeding edge, but, uh, you know, I don't mind it if somebody walks it off the lot. And I don't think the people that do it mind doing it, you know, so it works out for everybody. Walk it off the lot for me, use it for a little while, and they a lot of times are on to something else, or the adopters will be on to the very next thing that just comes out, you know. Quest 2s will be on the market when something else is better and faster. The only thing is your games are stuck on that system, on that ecosystem. That's where they get you. So you want to go and hold out for the Quest 3 so you can keep playing your games. Which is all some of the reasons why I'm starting to consider computer gaming. Because when you upgrade, you keep your games. When you buy, you own. To a point. I mean, it's on Steam. But as long as Steam exists, you can download your games. And if they go under, they'll probably let you download the whole thing and put it on a disc. If not, that's a gamble. It's like crypto. We're trusting that it keeps going. And if they uh, close down their exchange, they give you a head advance warning and take care of you with all of your hard work that you put in. So as not to hurt the community. There's some scammers out there, though. 
I don't know, some people say nice hash or something. I read a lot, you know, and I don't necessarily uh, mind, but there's like a minor website called nice hash and I guess they like stole like 40 million bucks or something like 40,000 bitcoins or it was like 6,600 or something and um, they paid it back after it had devalued like twice like it in half it was devalued in half and then they paid it back But they weren't finishing last, huh? It's possible it was just a hiccup. It could have been a hack. It could have been a misunderstanding. It could have been their hard drive. They weren't using SSDs and they weren't backing up their hard drives. I mean, you just don't know what all. How do you prove that? But you know, it's a peer-to-peer -peer payment system with no middleman. And so there's no one to vouch for the this double-edged thing. It's like, yeah, no one can no one can tell where you sent your money, but they can also not vouch for it. There's no FDIC insurance on it. It may get one day, though. There might be a way of verifi verifying. The transaction. You need to get a padded seat. This thing is hard. Like I'm sitting on a train. Can't imagine being an F1 car. I like the motion simulators for these F1 games. It looks. I've seen a few videos on all the different ones that are coming out, and I don't know what kind of volume they're selling those in. It's got to be in the handfuls. But you know, there's a whole world out there, and if you have a product at a good price, that probably helps. Or the best working product advertised. I'm sure, that helps a ton. This is a long race. But they look like they'd be fun to own. But you know, there's only so much movement you can get. It can shake you around a little, but if you hit the pedal, you're not going to get. A G or two in your back and when you hit the brake it's not going to feel like hitting the brake really it'll give you some feedback but it's gonna be comparable to the vibration on a controller I'm sure it's better than none though I've experienced something like that just at arcades before and it's okay but man what a lot of money forty thousand dollars But hey, if it makes you happy, it's worth every penny. I like to divide it into the time spent. See what my hourly rate is. Someone can make me happier for $200 an hour than my VR setup, then maybe I'll be doing that instead. Not necessarily a person, but just anything. All right, I made it. I did not win, as you can see. My difficulty level is too high for my skill level, and it was all simulation, and I was talking. So the difference between this and winning is I would finish first instead of the other guys, but very similar in other ways, other than running off the track. But uh, I say give it a try. If you have never played this game, F1 2019, 2020, 2018, all the way back to 2016, they're all good games. Some of the older ones can be had for really cheap on Steam if you're on the computer. Um, these guys are going to want a little bit more on Xbox. So they can subsidize, you know, pay back their subsidization. Subsidization. They're a little jittery. So 
motion capture is a little jittery on that, but it's still pretty good. It's neat. Anybody that doesn't have a video game system, honestly, they should probably buy one. Even older folks, you know, if you're 80 and you just want to stick to your guns on how things used to be, I say do it, but get a game system as well. Because a lot of people are getting phones and they have electricity and all of that, so... I don't know if they're going to let me continue. I think you... Is it possible that you can lose all the way through this? I don't know. Anyway, one more time, I want to say thank you for watching this channel. Uh, my eBay store is GB Hatchery. You can always check that out. I'll leave a link in the description. Hope you enjoyed this video. Other than that, I hope you're safe and healthy, and I'll see you in the next video.